Hello my friends, today we are going to make this, which can be expanded to make other things like this. So let's check it out. Okay, I have a sheet of paper here, which I am going to use for this project. We will first convert it into a square. An easy way to convert a regular sheet of paper into a square is to line up a the tip well, create a triangle and line up the tip so that it is as close to perfectly straight down the edge as possible before you crease it. And then I use my thumb to just kind of give me a good straight crease. Now let's turn it over and we are going to take off this little extra piece. So let's get this off of here and I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to make the edge of the triangle right here so that it is almost exactly a triangle and then I'm going to line up this side so that it goes straight down the edge of the paper and that gives me a pretty darn straight edge for making this. Now I don't particularly like using scissors on paper like this so I fold it back and forth and just crease it each time. The One of my favorite methods is just to crease it with my thumb fingernail pushing against the uh, paper and then slide it across fold it back and forth a couple of times this will weaken the structure of the paper and make it so that we can tear it straight down that crease and it won't tear in a funny line or anything like that so now that we have our square we are going to fold this square in half and then we will fold it in half those halves into halves. So if you can see the, the crease right here, I'm just going to bring this right straight to that center crease. And then I will do the same thing on the other side. Hey everybody, I put some puns at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Creating something like a center type book, you know. Okay, now we're going to open that back up, and you got to pick two corners. I'm going to pick these two, and we are going to kind of, we're, we're going to use this first crease point. See if I can get that to show up a little bit better. We're going to use this first crease point as our uh, coordinator, and we are going to bring the corner to line up this, ed this edge with this edge, so we can do this. And we'll do this, do this one more time so that we'll kind of create a steeper angle right here. I was about to go to the other side and do it, but you know, we can stick it out here. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Now notice I am diagonal to it. And we're going to repeat this same step. One. And two. And then I bring it closed again, like we had it before. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to bring it down to this edge. And we will make that point right there. And then I'm going to lift up this flap and tuck it underneath. We'll repeat the same thing again on the opposite side. And this time I can't exactly lift that up, so I'm just going to tuck it under. And that gives us our masterpiece for this project. This piece can do so many things, but one of the things we need to do is we need to give it one more item of definition, and that is we're gonna take this corner and take this point, and we're gonna make this into a square for the time being. So I'm gonna do that. We'll bring, keep this corner right here, and then bring the point up. I might not have worded that the best way, but you know, I tried. Then, this, what this does is this gives us these pockets. And these pockets will come in handy for assembling other things. Well, assembling the shapes that we're going to be making. Uh, mostly, I, most parts will require this last fold that makes it into a triangle. And it kind of gives us this iconic shape that kind of looks like, kind of like a, I don't know, weird dice or something I don't know but 
using the smaller ones for the sphere, we can then connect pieces together by just following the pockets and these bends. So I will reconnect this piece right here if the sphere will <laughs> cooperate with me. And then right here, I just need to get these pieces to cooperate. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? Let's just make a different shape. <laughs> okay. This was 12 pieces. Now I've got six pieces right here and I can take these pieces and I can run them through and just connect them all together and you will see that with six pieces we get a more right angled shape. I'll quickly put these last two pieces together. And you just gotta kind of play dodge ball here and make sure I have all my tails out. And then I can feed the last piece underneath these two tails and connect all four connections. And there we go. We have a cube. Now, with just six pieces, the sphere was 12 pieces and this is six pieces. We can make one more shape if we do three pieces. So let me just pull off these three pieces. And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave these two connected and we're gonna assemble this one. And we will put these across right here. And then if I just bring, whoops, I assembled it wrong. We need to go the other way. We need to assemble it from this side. And I don't know why this actually is a thing, but it kind of is. It gets you set up for making this piece right here. So we're gonna fold these over on themselves a little bit and we'll tuck the various ends in. And this makes some sort of like trihedron or something like that. I don't know the names of the hedrons, but you can see it makes kind of this cool little mini dual pyramid thing. Trimid, right? Sweet. So the cool thing that you can do with this is I have not yet seen a maximum size to a creation that you can make with these. Granted, it seems to take more pieces because we had three here, we had six for the cube, and then we had 12 for the initial sphere that I showed you at the beginning. But, for some odd reason, it doesn't just double every time. This particular creation, this particular creation, did not just take 24, it took a lot more than that. And comment in the area below just to see what you guys think this took in terms of quantity. I'm not gonna tell you now, but I'll tell you in a month. Yeah, we'll do it in a month, we'll tell you in a month. I'll, I'll post a comment on this video in a month as to how many pieces this particular sphere took. And I love this particular origami because it's just so fun. You can just use your imagination to how large or small an object can be made. Something to think of uh, just as we get started with this is why should you not make an origami belt? Yeah, it's just a waste of paper. One of the reasons why I do not do origami very often is because it's just too much paperwork. You know, I watched the origami championships the other day. Yeah, it was on pay-per-view. It seemed like a bit of a scam. Both teams folded. The other day I heard a news reporter say, breaking news, a man was just arrested for completing an origami backwards. We will tell you more as the story unfolds. So I once bought a book on origami and one of the coolest things was, just after buying it, I had made a thousand paper snowballs. I tried to intimidate a gentleman with origami the other day. He folded. I joined an origami club the other day. They welcomed me by saying, welcome to the fold. Apparently origami artists are pretty bad at poker. They just keep folding. A gentleman lost his vision the other day. 
but he made a business selling origami. He called the name of the business Blindfolds Deluxe. This just in, the highway is full of origami vehicles, and it is a traffic jam that is being described as stationary. That's all I got for you. Have a wonderful day.